Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you so very much for joining us. If you're hearing this program on its normally scheduled time, it is the day right after Christmas. I hope you and your family had a wonderful time. If your family is very small or you're the only one in it, I hope you were able to gather with some others and just rejoice in the goodness and grace and mercy of God in sending his only begotten son into the world that we through him might be saved. Reach over, pick up your Bible, if at all possible, right now, and open to 1 Peter chapter 1. My Bible sits open there. 1 Peter chapter 1, I'll read a couple of verses here in just a moment. Now, the very first day of the series that we're doing here on prophecy, I began with the verses I'm going to read here out of 1 Peter. Uh, These verses identified three facts. Uh, Fact number one was that Messiah would come. Fact number two was that Messiah would suffer, and fact number three is that Messiah would bring in glory. Now, we've just celebrated, as I said, the fact that Messiah came. We had Christmas time. Jesus is the Messiah. He came. His virgin birth was foretold as the method by which he would come. In a few short weeks, we'll celebrate Easter. That holy day reminds us every year, at least on that weekend, that Messiah suffered and died. But praise the Lord, he arose from the dead. So far, facts number one and two have taken place historically. But fact number three, and the truth that Messiah would usher in glory, well, that one's not happened yet. This week, let's talk about when he will come with glory. He'll be brought in and he will bring in glory. We call this event the second coming of Christ or the second advent of Christ. Now, you really need pen and paper today. And if at all possible, get your Bible open with me again, 1 Peter and chapter 1. By the way, dear friend, as we close out this year, our ministry, like many others, closes out on the shortfall financially. If you can help us. Now, perhaps you're listening to this radio program on a radio station that has a -a share-a-thon. If that be true, that means that they give us, they donate their time on air to us so that we can have the broadcast. Why not give that radio station a gift, a financial gift to help them continue what they're doing. If your radio station does not have a share then ministries like ours pay to be on the air. It would be a great help to us if you consider a gift uh, to the ministry to help us end our year in a strong financial way. Would you consider that? Pray about that, please. Thank you so much. Well, the ministry here, Bible Tract Echoes, is the radio arm of Bible Tracts Incorporated, and we're talking about a gospel tract. That's an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I want to give you a gift. I know Christmas is over, but I got a gift for you. I want to give you a gift which contains one each of all of our gospel tracts. It's our sample packet. One of the tracts in there is this one, titled titled, I'm Keeping the Golden Rule. I'm Keeping the Golden Rule. How many people think they're going to get to heaven because they are good, and their measure of their goodness is the golden rule? You know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, friend, do you know that not only did Jesus say that, but Buddhism has their own version, Hinduism has their version, Judaism has their version of the golden rule, but they're not quite the same. Did you know that? Well, this gospel tract tells you what the others say and how they're different from what Jesus said. Friend, if you're trying to keep the golden rule to get to heaven, forget it. You need the shed blood of Christ to pay your sin debt. Here's a great gospel tool 
I'm keeping the golden rule. Listen when my announcer gives our contact information at the end of the program, or you can go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. All right, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 and 11 say this, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which is in them, did signify when it testified beforehand of the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. That's why I'm going to stop the reading right there. Now, these verses are, for me at least, the place where all of Bible prophecy is summarized. There are other places that focus on various aspects and details surrounding Messiah's coming, his suffering, and his glory. And these other places highlight, as I say, those details. But here in these, God gives us the central focus of all of Bible prophecy. Prophecy was un, is the unfolding of God's plan of salvation. That's what verse 10 says. God's salvation plan centers on Messiah's coming. We're told that grace was coming, verse 10 says, when Messiah would come. Well, guess what? John chapter 1 says that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. In verse 11 of 1 Peter 1 there, we're told that Messiah would suffer. Why? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. But we are not only saved away from sin, we are saved unto glory. And that particular aspect of God's salvation plan is yet to be fulfilled in all of its fullness. Now, starting today, I'm going to be using a series of words, all beginning with the letter C, like in the word cat. And these words will focus on the key Bible truth we need to know about the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's when he comes comes in glory and brings in glory. Let me give you all of my five C words here. Are you ready? Number one will be claim, the claim of his coming. Number two, complete. He will come and complete Old Testament prophecy. Number three, the characteristics, the characteristics of his coming. Number four, caliber, the caliber or the manner of his coming. And then number five, the word is conquering. He will come at the conquering at his coming. Now, depending on the time, I may add one more word there, but we'll see what happens. Today, though, jot the word down. It's the word claim. Jesus claimed he would come again. Listen as I read here from Matthew chapter 25. This is what verse 31 says. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit on the throne of his glory. Twice the word glory is mentioned there. Jesus is the Son of Man. And right before his arrest and crucifixion, he said that he would come again. There is a future coming, a second coming of Christ. Why? Jesus said so. At Jesus' ascension back into heaven, the angels were there, and they said these words to the disciples. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye see him go into heaven." Jesus is going to return. His heavenly angels said so. And so Jesus and the holy angels claim that there would be another coming, a second coming. That's my C word there, claim. But let me go to my second C word, which is the word complete. Jesus must return a second time to complete, to fulfill the Old Testament prophecies that are not yet been completed. If I were to take you to almost the very end of the New Testament, to the book of Jude, that little one-chapter book of Jude, verse 14, listen to what Jude 14 says. I'm reading now. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. End quote there. Now, We have no written text in our Old Testament of Enoch declaring these words, but the Holy Spirit moved on Jew to write and to tell us that this truth is what Enoch did preach. So, 
As far back as Enoch, the seventh from Adam, it was prophesied that Messiah would come, but it says he would come with ten thousands of his saints. Now, this prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. But if you go over to the book of the Revelation, chapter 19, verse 14 says, Jesus will return with armies, plural. Well, one of those armies will be his saints, ten thousands of his saints. But oh, there's one more place. You got to jot it down. Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah 14 has got to be one of my favorite Bible passages in all of Scripture, but particularly on the second coming of Christ. In verse 3 of Zechariah 14, there we're told that the Lord shall go forth and fight. Now, that's a reference to the battle of Armageddon. But then verse 4 of Zechariah 14 says these words I'm reading, And his feet, Messiah's feet, shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave, that means it's going to split, it's going to, Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. Now, you tell me, do you think Jesus ever stood on the Mount of Olives during his earthly ministry? Well, I'm sure that he did. But during those three and a half years of public ministry, did the Mount of Olives ever split wide open? No, it did not. So this prophecy has yet to be fulfilled, but it will be when at his next coming, his second coming. Okay, why do you and I, if you're a soul winner, you're a person that loves Jesus Christ as Savior, and my friend, if you love Christ, you gotta be telling the gospel. That's what I mean by a soul winner. So you tell me, dear soul winner, why do you and I need to know this information? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's why. Over in the Gospel of Luke chapter 19, there Jesus tells a story. In the story, he says that a nobleman goes away on a long journey. But before he leaves, he gives these instructions to his workers. I'm reading now, occupy until I come. That was the instruction, occupy until I come. That word occupy literally means do business do business. Well, friend, Jesus is our nobleman. He's our master. He has gone away on a long journey, but he's going to return. But you and I have been told what to do until then. We must be faithful in doing business. Oh, yes, we've got to do your business. You got to go to work. You got to change the oil in the car. You got to iron the clothes. You got to take care of the babies. Yes. But listen, we got to occupy doing his business until he comes. What are you doing to serve the Lord? I've got a suggestion for you. Let me send you that sample packet of gospel tracts. It's going to give you the tools by which you can be doing the business of God until he comes of giving the gospel to people that as yet do not know Christ as Savior. You and I can be faithful until he comes. He is coming again. When? Don't know. When he comes, the next time he'll take his believers away, It'll come a second time to do wrath upon earth. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.